Welcome to today's webinar, and this is the core doors connector that we're focusing on today. My name is Katie Thacker, and I will be your host during today's webinar. It's presented by Bethany Maddox. Uh, Bethany serves as Vitex customer care specialist, primarily at the support desk. And between support cases, she manages the overall vision of customer care here, uh, developing instructional screencasts on various core and genesis topics and elements of software documentation. She has often served as a host, writer, and technical manager of countless webinars throughout her tenure here at Vitech. And before Bethany gets started, I have just a few quick housekeeping items. As with all of our Spotlight webinars, questions will be answered both halfway through the webinar and at the end, so please send your questions in as soon as you think of them throughout the quest through the question tab on the webinar control panel. Bethany will pause halfway through your presentation to answer a few questions. We will also be holding a comprehensive Q&A session at the end of the presentation. Our webinar is being recorded today, so if you experience a connection problem during the live presentation, a recording will be available by request within 24 hours of the live version. To request access to the recording, please get in touch with Vitech customer support at support at vitechcorp.com. Now I'm going to turn the presentation over to Bethany. Welcome and thank you for joining us. Thanks, Katie. This webinar will provide a step-by-step -step process to extract requirement information from DOORS in a format that will allow importing into CORE. And then we'll take that data into CORE and then finally we'll make the round trip and push data back. Um, you can do, there, there's different scenarios through which you can move data in between the two tool sets. And we found that as we're explaining things to people, if we go ahead and do the round trip, then if you were choosing just to do one direction, um, then that's a very plausible thing. and You'll have ever, all the information that you need. So we'll be doing the round trip today. Now, as we get started, I wanted to tell you um, a, just a little something about my experiences. I've been talking to some of our customers um, when they are setting this up. And what I hear a lot is a core user who has been told, hey, get, get Core connected with Doors, but they're not necessarily a Doors user. And if you're not, what I'd like to assure you is that this is not hard. I am not a Doors user. In just a few short hours, I was able to figure out what I, the, the minimum set of what I needed to know in Doors. Um, I'm sure it has far more complexity um, than, than what I've needed to do. But when, if you just scratch the surface, you'll have everything that you need in order to make the data transfer between the two tool sets. Um, Katie did say that the webinar is going to be recorded, so you can always reference that. And if you have any questions, you can also always call our support team um, so that we'll be here and can answer any questions since we've been, well, I've been um, working on this and learning doors so that I can, I can show it to all of you. So let's go ahead and get started. And as we do that, I want to note two things. First, this push between core and doors is a manual process. Right now, it's not automated. So we'll set it up once. Um, this is my second point here, we'll set it up and then we will create um, some templates for reuse. But whenever you want to push data, you actually have to log into them and export and import data. Um, it's just not set up for um, automation at this time. So um, we're going to go ahead and get started. And we will pause as soon as I'm done with doors here in just a minute. We're going to set up doors um, and do an export, and then we'll pause for questions. So if you have questions on the doors front, um, go ahead and send those in right away. Now, the ability to move information between doors and core depends on the understanding the relationship between the elements and their attributes across the two programs. So it's really important um, that we, we discuss those things because the requirements are displayed quite differently in the two tool sets. If you use both, you'll know that, that they're really quite different. Um, so we've, we've got to understand how it's displayed and um, indoors and the relationship to that information in core. So let's take a look at how they look indoors and how to export, export that data in a format that core will take. Now this, what you're seeing on my screen here, you should be seeing doors and I have brought in a very simple requirements document, a, a radically simple requirements document. Um, so the, the most of what we see here, um, we have an ID column and then we have some text of the requirements. Now before we export the data, we need to modify this view indoors um, to, to adjust the format so that we can get the data out that we want. So I'm going to use a button on the toolbar here. Um, this button right here will add columns to the view that we're looking at. So I want to keep this ID. Let's go ahead and add. 
sorry, it popped up on the wrong screen. There we go. I'm going to add the object heading. So I'll leave this set at attribute and change this to object heading. Click insert. And you'll notice that added it back. And I still have this dialog open. Let's add the object number. Object text. And the last modified on date. There we go. So I've added all of those. And you'll notice it added them in the order I put them in. Now I'm going to remove this column. Remove. Now that I've set this up, I'm going to go ahead and save this view in case I needed to use it at a different time. This is normally something you'll only use once, so I'm going to make sure I name it appropriately. Um, so I'm going to click View, Save As, and bring that over to this screen you're seeing. And we'll call this Initial Export to Core. That way when we're looking at the different views we have available, we'll know that this is just the first time push use. And I'll click OK. And then it'll take just a minute for uh, doors to commit that. All right, now we've adjusted the view and we're going to export the information from doors and put it into a CSV file. So I will click File, Export, and then Spreadsheet. Here we see the Export Spreadsheet dialog. We want to make sure that the Export Radio button is set to Displayed Columns. The include setting should be to set at display set only. And we want to make sure we have a check mark here next to include attribute names. Make sure that the data separator is set to the comma. And then finally, we'll need to designate a file name and a location for it to save. So we'll put that on the desktop. And we'll just call this export from doors. Oops, typo. There we go. So it's really that easy. Um, it should have finished. Let me just make sure I have my file. Oh, where did it go? One more time. There we go. Now I have a file on my desktop. So that's it for setting up doors and exporting the data for a file that um, Core can read. Um, so I'll go ahead and take a moment, pause for questions. Katie, do we have anything on the doors side before we move forward? Uh, let's see. On the doors side, it looks like someone is asking, uh, Please show me how to switch between views in Doors. Sure. Um, that is really simple. Let's bring Doors back. And um, once you have the view set up, you'll have a view drop down right here. And you can switch just by dropping this down and switching. And again, the way I, I created my extra view, you'll always have standard in a new module. And then what I did is I changed the view the way I wanted it to, and I clicked View, Save As. Now, um, one of the things that it's important to note, as long as we're pausing and talking about the views, Katie, is that these views can be um, made available to other users of your Doors repository and to use in other modules. So as you're setting that up, when you are in the Save As menu, um, take, a, take a minute to look through some of these. I, have it, I had it set to private. You can make it public, custom, and um, there's some advanced options. Refer to the Doors documentation um, for full details of that. Um, this is one of those things where it's got a lot of capability I'm not touching today. I'm scratching the service, uh, surface of this views capability, um, but there's a lot of options for you. So if you're using this in a team environment, you'll definitely want to explore those and, and reference the Doors documentation. Okay, so would that also work well for, let's say I've got a customer who is using Doors uh, for their management, I'm using Core, and I don't have Doors and my customer doesn't have Core. So mm -hmm. that documentation, I guess, would help me out in making sure that we've got our communication going back and forth properly? Yes, absolutely. We have a document, and I'm going to show you that here in just a little while, that is a written document of everything that you're going to need to do between the two tools. And that's something that will be all-encompassing, so you'll just need to reference the, the separate parts of it. Um, that, that you need. Okay, great, thanks. We don't have any more questions right now, but I will keep an eye as we go through the rest of the webinar. Thank okay. you. Okay, sounds great. So um, just as we needed to do a little bit of work to set up doors, we do need to do just a touch of work to set up core. So let's go core open here. Now I just have core open to a blank project, so I just clicked open core and clicked new project with all of the default settings, and that's where we're starting here right now, just so everyone can get their bearing. 
First, we need to modify parts of the core schema to, ac to accommodate those attributes that are used in doors that, that core doesn't have. So not only is this information and schema modification needed on initial import of the DOORS requirement data, these attributes will be updated if or when the requirement set is moved between the two tools whenever ongoing exchanges happen between the projects. Now we've made um, this extension very simple in, in core and created a file that you can just import. Um, so note that anytime you are importing schema changes, um, you must be a project administrator on, on, that, on that data set. So if you are a user that doesn't have full access, you'll want to make sure your administrator does this or ask that administrator to grant you those permissions temporarily so that you can do this schema extension. Also, anytime you make a schema change, you want to make sure that nobody is using the project. And so just make sure that everybody's logged out. If you are using the core server, there are some features in the core server um, inside administrative tools where that can allow you to send messages to users who are logged in, asking them to log out and forcing them to log out just in case they left for lunch and they're not there to log themselves out. You can force that all through administrative tools. And um, you can, of course, learn more about administrative tools. If you're a fan of my webinars, um, we did a webinar on server administration. So you can check out that recording to learn, get the full details um, of, of that one. Sorry, Katie, I'm always going <laughs> to plug my previous <laughs> webinars and get people to take a look at those recordings. So once we've made sure no one is using the project, I'm going to click File, Import, Core Data File. Now, let me find where that is. Um, it's normally going to be under Program Files, Vitec, Core 9, then Data, and it's going to be in the Extensions folder. So I will select the Doors Connector Schema and click Open. So step one is just confirming what's in the file that I'm importing, and I'll just accept that and click next. Now on step two we need to make sure that we designate our project as the target. Notice that is not the default. Right now it wants to create a new one. So I'm going to select import into project, drop this down and choose my project which is generically named project one right now. Then I'll click next. And then on step three this is just a confirmation of what you just did. The name of what you're importing and the destination. So give that a quick check and then click import. Apologize, my mouse is being a little weird. There we go. And that's done. The import is really quick. And now because I know so many of the people watching this webinar today are detail people, you probably want to know exactly what changes I just made to my project. So let's take a look at that. Um, th this import does add a requirement attribute for the doors object ID. We can take a look at these. Here, and here they are. So it adds requirement attributes for the doors object ID, doors object number, and doors last modified. It does also alias an attribute that core calls the paragraph title, and now that's called doors object heading. Now again, I know you're, you're detail people, so let me point you to a document that outlines this. Um, now I am not showing um, the screen with my start button right now. I apologize for that. Um, our last minute setup change had me move, um, so, but I would normally just click start and then I'd click All Programs, and then Core 9, then Documentation, and in that folder you'll find something called the Doors Connector Guide, and here it is on screen now. So this document is a written description of what you're seeing today, and if I scroll down to page 5, four, there we go. Right here we'll find a table um, that describes the Doors attributes and where they are imported into Core. The um, notes column here indicates whether the attribute was added to core or if it aliased an existing core attribute. And this table is helpful to ensure you have a complete understanding of the way data is linked between the two programs. Now that we've set up the core project schema to receive requirements from doors, we will need to create a package in core which will be the container for the requirements coming from doors. Now additional packages should be created each time you bring data over um, or you bring a different doors document over um, so that it's contained um, for easier selection so that you know exactly what came over when. And so I'm going to right click on packages in the project pane and select new package. 
and let's just name this doors requirements. And you'll see if I expand that folder, we now have a package. Now we're all set up on core. That's all it takes to extend your project to be ready for it. So let's import the file that came from doors. To do that, I'll click File, Import from Doors. And I'm going to navigate to my desktop since that's where I put it and select my file and click open. In step one of the doors import wizard, I'll select the package we just created. Click next. Step two allows me to specify if the requirements coming from doors will reside in the requirement class or if there is sufficient information available for the requirements to reside in multiple classes. Now, following our strata methodology, requirements could be located throughout the model. Um, they can be found as a leaf level component, a function, an interface, link classes, as well as the requirement class. Um, when, when you first bring data over from doors, the presumption is that it's, we're going to go take this first option for requirements only and that we're going to put everything into the requirements class. If we wanted to, well, once we start moving data back and forth and making that round trip, we may have some things that come back for derived requirements and design, things that are going to end up in other classes, so you may want to select that at a later date, but initially we're going to do requirements only. So let's click next. Now here we're given a chance to view and modify a table definition. Now this tells Core the data that's in the file and where it's going to map that into Core. Now there's a lot of information um, that is in this table, so much that I can't cover it all today. Now, if, if you'd like to know more about using this table in depth, I'll go ahead and plug another one of my webinar recordings. And um, we did one on getting data in and out of core. And in that webinar, I went deep on these table definitions and how they're used. And that one I mentioned it could be used from doors, but I didn't tell you the details on doing that. But we went really deep on how to do this table. Most of the time when you take data in and out of doors, you're going to use um, one of our stored definitions. And we'll come back to those in just a moment. Now, we are today going to go through just the, the key information, the stuff that's pertinent on working with doors. And this first row value is important. Um, this lists the column heading that's in your CSV file, so you don't have to open it to check. We list it here, it's not editable, but it gives me a chance just to double check this mapping and make sure I'm happy. Now, now modification to the table can be made and you can save it. And um, you know, here you see I have for the stored definition, I have doors general import selected. And I can make any changes to this table that I want. If I choose to save those changes, I can. I just click save and I can save it as a new definition or overwrite my existing one. We don't recommend you overwrite our stock definitions, but we also don't prevent you from doing so. That's, so that's entirely up to you. And this is definitely one of those places where we set it up for reuse so that once you've figured out this initial one-way push back and forth, then we can just do it that way um, as, as, we, as we move back and forth. And I should actually have this one set to doors requirements import for our first one. So there we go. I've got it set to the right one. So we're going to leave everything set at the default here today and then I'll click next. Now, because we need to allow for the renaming of requirements elements and doors, you may see a warning dialog like this that is alerting you to the possibility that it's renaming core elements. Be sure to take your time with these dialogs and examine them carefully before you proceed. I'll go ahead and click yes. Now, step four is going to show us options for processing the file and post-processing the results. Includes header row will allow for the first row in the CSV file to be discarded upon import. We don't want those column headers to become data, and that's what this is going to allow here. The default here is yes, and you generally want to leave it this way. You definitely want to leave it this way for a file that Doors um, created because it put header, a header row in there for you. The option for ignore empty attributes and parameters determines what to do with the column if the column row is blank. If no is selected when core encounters a blank entry in the row, 
processing of that row is stopped and then an error is returned. If yes is selected, a blank entry in the row will skip that column entry um, and then every, the rest of the row will continue to be processed. The default here is yes and you'll want to leave it that way most of the time. Clear existing targets and relationships may need to be adjusted when you are adding relationships and targets from the CSV file. Here you have the option to clear the relationships that are currently residing in the core database. And this will allow for a restructuring of the data outside of core. The default here is no, but you may find yourself wanting to adjust this from time to time. Take your time here and make a deliberate selection. Rebuild hierarchy based upon door's object number allows you to set parent-child relationships in core based on the numbering that is used in doors. The default is yes. I'll go ahead and click import. We're going to set all the defaults. Click import to proceed and it's working and it's done. Now when the requirements are first imported into core, core generates a unique core name for each requirement by assigning a default name um, in the format of requirement underscore followed by a three digit number. Let's see that in action. I'll go to my package and here's the, all the requirements that we brought in and let's select a requirement element and take a look. There's one with some text in it. Now notice the section at the bottom of the property sheet tab. Here are the items that were brought in. Um, so some very specific doors data that you may want to reference. Now um, when I was going over this um, information with our QA manager, she wanted me to make sure that I pointed out just a little bit more depth in what you imported when you brought in that schema file um, that was the doors extension and we added some sort blocks for you. So if you click down here, you will find a couple of sort blocks that start with doors. So if you are talking with your doors expert and they reference doors object number 1.03, you can switch it over to the door's object number and find that and still be able to reference things um, the same way that that person is seeing things in doors. So we've extended just a little bit and put some depth in that schema ex extension for you. We also have one called doors object ID um, that you can use there as well. So that is our one-way push from doors to core all the way in. Um, Katie, any questions at this point before we push data back? We've got one question from Stephanie uh, that she would she would like to know how you handle updates if the requirements change in doors and you need to update the core model. Is that different than what you have shown so far? We haven't gotten to that part yet. Okay. Um, once we set this up and we've done round trip, then um, if, say, Katie, you were working in doors and, and we needed to get data back over, we would just do, repeat the doors part. Now, remember, we've already set doors up. We've set up a reusable view. So we would just, you know, file, export, spreadsheet, and push that file over, import it into core. Again, we don't have to repeat all the setup. The setup is once and done with reusable templates. But then, but then when, once you update doors, you just send the update back. Okay. Thank okay. you very much. Anything else before we go on? All right. Um, I do have one more that just came in. It, it, someone's asking here, can you show me how to edit the table definitions in core? Sure, sure. Let's take a look at that. Um, I'll have to bring that back up just by going to it the same way I got to it before. So I'll just select that file, even though we've already done it. We're not going to go all the way through. We'll just get part way there and cancel out. So. Here you can make any changes that you want. Um, I can change the order of something in, well, I should be able to switch them back and forth and I apologize that this isn't working but I can change the positioning and I'm not sure why it's not letting me switch them. I'll have to work on that and there may be um, something wrong. I've not used that previously. The, the type is going to tell Core what kind of data is coming in. Is this a folder information? Is this the attribute? Um, is this relationship information? So I can just drop these down and change them um, and then this tells Core exactly what attribute it's going into and all of your attributes are available here. Everything in your entire 
entire project. So you can um, just drop those down and change it to what you want. Um, if you are importing a relationship, you want to make sure to tell it what target class you're going to, and you can designate that here. Um, so really all you do is just drop this down and change it to what you want it to be, and then save it, and you can save it with, an, with the same name or a new name. So it really is that simple. Now, getting it exactly the way you want it, is the hard part and that's where you're going to want re reference my um, older webinar um, that goes into full detail on this one um, to make sure that you get it. Now whenever I do anything to my real live production data I always back up my data first. So let me put my customer support hat on and say be crazy obsessive about your data and before you do anything for the first time when you're setting this up Go ahead and make a backup, export your data to an XML file from Core, and make a backup of your doors data, however you do that. Just in case you're not happy with your results, it'll be really simple, simple to revert back to where you were before you made any changes. So and We have all learned that the hard way. Oh, so have we ever. Learn. Okay, so I'll take my customer <laughs> support hat off now yeah. and go back to webinar mode. Um, Katie, anything else? Uh, it does not look like we have anything else right at this moment. Okay. So we've taken data from doors to core. Let's push it back. Now we're going to pretend I've actually changed this data for the sake of our webinar. <laughs> um, and we know I've already extended my core schema. If this is where you're starting, let's say you're a core user and your doors people came and said, hey, give me your core data. I want to get it in. Make sure you go back and import that schema. Okay? Um, it's very important to have, have that information included. Um, we've already done that, so I don't need to do that right now. Um, you also need to make sure that all of the elements that you want to send over to doors are in a package. Now, my, that, I have already achieved that right now because I set that up and I imported my data in and we're all set there. Um, if this was my starting place, if I, was, if I was initially setting up between the two going core to doors, I would need to create a package and place my elements in that package. If you're a core user, you know how to create relationships and that's just a simple packaged by relationship. And you can see that all of my elements here have that relationship. I can actually view them from the requirement class and see that they are packaged by my doors requirement. And so it's important that you go ahead and set that up. That's your container um, for everything you're sending over to doors. Um, so um, now I'm pushing back the same elements I brought in from doors. So this is already accomplished. So let's go ahead and push it in or out from mm -hmm. core. <laughs> All right, I'm going to click File, Export, Two Doors. In step one, I'll select the package um, for where I've placed all my requirements. And then in step two, select Yes to do the export for the first time using the core paragraph number. In step three, select and load the stored definition file and this time I'm going to use doors by paragraph number. Again, remember there's others. We have options here, um, but that's the one I'm going to use here. And, and this is, again, one of those um, options you can reuse. We've talked about that extensively. I'm going to leave everything as it is. Go to straight defaults and click export. Let me um, name this export from core. Put it on my desktop for easy access. Okay. Uh, let's switch back over to doors. Now in order to capture all of the information from core in the doors database, we need to add some attributes to doors that's going to accept the information, similarly to what I did in core. Um, now in doors, I don't have it set up for a simple bring all of this in in one, in one import sort of scenario. So we're going to do this manually here. Um, we may have some doors experts who chime in and say, hey, you can create a file that you can import and that's quite possible. Again, I know doors is far richer than what I'm demonstrating. Um, so um, let's bring up that doors connector guide because it is going to show me um, a great table um, on what we are going to create and that's going to be down on page 15. Here we go. And so I'm going to need to create attributes and doors for everything here that has this red text in the middle column. So 
So I have my module open and I'm going to click Edit, Attributes. Here's my window. And let's go ahead and bring my document back up. Here we go. So once I'm here again, I'm going to just create new ones here for these. So I'll click New. And according to this table here, I'm naming it Core ID. And I'm going to set the type to String. And click OK. Now I'll keep doing this. Sorry, it made my document go away. Core class. We're adding this class again, just in case I um, have documents. And I have, sorry, I have requirements and classes other than requirement. And this is where it'll hold that information. Now notice this right here, add at new attribute to current view. It's changing this table behind. And we're going to take a look at that. But I want to make sure that I note that I like to leave this on. So I don't have to manually create my view as I add these. It's going to do a little bit of work for me. So I'm going to click OK. New again, and we need the core name. This will be the element name from core, and that is also a string. New. Now we're going to do some relationships based on, and we're going to set the type to text here. This does take a minute, but I wanted to do this the long way, just so you can see that it's really only going to take us about half an hour to set it up once and be ready for reuse. Usually I do a little bit of webinar magic and can skip through a few things. So we did based on, we did refines. I think I'm on specified by. And one more which was allocated component. Okay. All right. And I'm all set there. Now, once we've added these, we want to order these. And we want to put them in the same order as the CSV file. Um, so I'm going to grab my CSV file here real quick. And we want to make sure we we'll to put things in, in almost the same order here. So here it is. I'm going to toss it over on my other screen so I have enough room to work. But you've seen what I'm working off of here. So now I created these in order. We should be pretty close. So we have ob ID, object heading, object number, object text. Um, and then I'm going to slip this last modified date in here. It's not in the core file, but we can leave it right where it is. And then these are entered in in the order that I created them, and this just happens to be the order in which they're in the file. Now, if you needed to move something, I just want to show you really quick how simple this is to move columns and orders. If you put them in and out of order, you just grab the header and move it over to where you want it to be. It really is that simple um, to reorder the columns and doors. So if you needed to, um, that's how you go about it. Now we talked about reuse and this is one of those opportunities where I can save this view. So let's do that again. Let's go view, save as. And I'm gonna, going to give this a new name. And we're going to call this round trip with or. And now that I've um, set everything up, I can use this view after the initial. Remember, this was our first, we did a first time push from core to doors and a first time push the other way. The, the, the previous, the ones after that, we can use this definition. So we don't have to retype all of those all of those items in every time. That's right. We don't have to retype things. We don't have to reset tables, reorder them. We'll just switch views and with a drop down box and be on our way. Okay, excellent. Okay. All right. Close that CSV file so it's available. Now let's go ahead and bring in our core data. Again, pretending I made changes. Um, so we'll click File, Import, Spreadsheet. Now we've got a few options here. We want to set Import to Attributes by Column Labels. 
import options um, to create new objects if this is new data um, and it's, everything's new from core. Um, if I'm updating a module where I pushed my, my, my doors data to core, now I'm bringing it back to make the round trip, then I want to use update existing objects. Um, in this webinar, we're trying to accomplish round trip. Round trip it is a bit of a trick. <laughs> and so I'll select update existing objects right here. Um, make sure your data separator is set to comma. And finally, I'll use the browse button to find my file. And we're looking for export from core. Click open. And then finally, I'll click import. Now I'm getting this little pop-up here, and my limited doors knowledge um, is alerting me to the fact that it is trying to confirm what's going on with the object ID in doors. That wasn't an attribute that I was able to edit, and um, we think that we needed to. And so I just click confirm here, and um, it asked me to select this. I just select the object ID because that's what we're mapping the IDs together. We'll click select, and we are off. And there we go. Um, so that's it. We made the round trip. Um, it is still working. Oh, there we go. I have my update on the other screen that it was created and it's done. Now remember the key to moving information back and forth between doors and core is understanding the unique identifier attribute for each item, the items in the two databases. In core, the key element in the database to the individual items is the element ID. Let me show you that really quick. Um, so, if I am looking at any requirement and I switch over to the secondary tab, we have an ID. And this is the unique identifier in Core. Now, Core also does force unique element names. So, if you're a longtime Core user, you might know about that unique ID behind the scenes, but you might have thought that this is actually what we Core keys off of, and it doesn't. Um, core keys off of this unique ID right here. Um, in doors, the key element in the database is the object identifier. So it's going to be this column right here, this ID. That's, that's the, the information that tells you the identifier for every attribute. And now for configuration control of, a, of individual entities, each database is now also going to contain that identifier from the other database almost kind of marrying them. So we can see that you know, here is um, ID element number 39 in doors, and it is telling me the identification in core um, over here in this column. Um, so we've kind of married them together. And now when we push back and forth, once we set it up, they're going to always stay married. Now, um, we also um, want to take a look at the last modified date, and this is going to, to be something that's key. I know on doors, this is re a really important field. And so the, the last modified date from doors is going to push over to core so that you can key on to those kinds of things. Now, before we wrap up, I want to mention one more time that um, your team should consider which tool set is the authoritative source of requirement information. Um, so in, in other words, which tool set is going to be used to communicate your system design information for your stakeholders and suppliers? If all of that's going to come out of doors, then you need to treat doors as your authoritative source. If it's coming out of core, you need to treat core as your authoritative source. Now this document here, um, this connector guide is going to talk you through those different scenarios about which one is your authoritative source. Um, that's key because that's where you want to make sure that you're performing your baseline and containing your baseline information. Um, so, um, and I think that's about it, Katie. Okay. Uh, so What's I did have up? one more question come in. Um, it looks like it's for some clarification, and sure. I may have missed this. Uh, the question is, did you intend to select create or update when you were indoors? Uh, the message, I guess, said create it, but maybe you had said update. I'm not sure exactly. I don't know if we can get some more clarification on this one. I'm thinking when I did the new attributes. Oh, no, no, no. I know. I know. Mm -hmm. um, when we were importing, import spreadsheet, Right here. 
the difference between create new object and update existing objects. Um, I did intend to create updating existing, existing objects, which is what I think I did. If I didn't, um, that is all the more reason to always back up your stuff before you do it for the first time. <laughs> um, yes, um, in this case, I meant to update existing. Remember, that's for I have core I have doors data. I've pushed into core, and now I'm bringing it back with updates. So I want to up update my doors and, and get that current. If, if it's new stuff and everything's new from core and you need to get all new stuff, you can do create new objects. There's okay. probably something under the hood there in doors that a doors power user would know more in depth about the, 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 the nitty gritty details of how those are different. Well, I just got confirmation that it appeared your question, that you answered the question, you found the right spot. Fantastic. So. All right, one more just came in. Uh, Jim is asking, any tips on importing links from doors? Links, what kinds of links, Jim? Are we so we'll see using hyperlinks? I'm not sure, so we'll see. Uh, Jim, if you get a chance to clarify that, that would be great. Uh, it says module to module links. So, okay. I believe items can be. That, Jim, is a question I'm going to have to go get an answer for. Um, being um, new to doors, um, I have never done anything with module to module, so I'll need to go talk to our doors experts and, and find out how they go about that. And I promise you, Jim, she will reach out to you and get the answer because now she's curious. So yes, I'm very curious. <laughs> so I apologize I can't answer that one. That is um, a side effect of me being a core power user, but not oh. a doors power user. Okay, let's see. Uh, I do have another question here. Okay, will the export from doors to core work if the doors ID has a prefix on it? That's from Tristan. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't. Okay. Um, if it initially does not play nice in core, remember that every um, attribute in core, just like in doors, has a type. And it may be set, if it doesn't work, then it might have been set to integer instead of string or text. And so we can take a look at that type. Tristan, if you run into that with a header, um, I'm sorry, with an object ID having a prefix, um, please do just give me a call on the support line and we'll take a look. I can probably actually look over. And okay, he's saying core sometimes insists on having only numbers in a field. Yes, uh, yes, that's the type. Okay. Um, so let's take a look here. So this is the requirement class. Where are you? I can never find it. Um, there it is. So if I come over here and I look at doors object ID and right click, we go to attribute properties and it's looking for a string. So a string can be a mixture of, of numbers and letters. So it's going to be happy. Um, if we were okay. to have set it to say integer and it had those numbers, it had letters in it, core would be unhappy. Um, and so um, it does look like we have set it up so that it will accept it with um, a prefix. Okay, so that was planned mm -hmm. for. Okay. Yes. All right, and uh, here's a question from Andy. How are changes identified upon import to doors from core? Um, hi, Andy. I Doors, as far as I know, has a way of showing you um, what changes are. I think maybe it highlights them in red or something like that. Again, I'm not a Doors power user, and this is a very specific Doors question. So anyway, the way that Doors identifies changes is the way you're going to see that change. All right. If I imported a change from core, this last modified on date is going to change because this is an attribute from Doors. Um, and that, that's maintained by doors. Um, also, I think if I hadn't changed my view, if I go back to standard view, these colors are meaningful about changes, Andy. I'm hoping you're a doors user and the doors users out here know exactly what we're looking at with these colors, but um, our QA manager had told me that those indicate changed elements and that there's a way that you can accept changes. So you'd want to go about that through your normal processes and doors and that it will pick up on the core changes. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, let's see, uh, we've got one that should be an easy one for you. What's the name of that webinar that mentioned that you mentioned earlier dealing with the details of imports? Ooh, good question. Good question. Gosh, I wish that was an easy one. Let's see if I can go find it. I'll just show you where to find them if my, uh, my browser really doesn't want to open right now. There she is. 
let's get out to the Vitek website. And <laughs> oh, there go all those windows. <laughs> Got a little excited there. There we go. So I'm going to log into my support. So everybody on our webinar today should have a login to this. Since you are all existing customers, you know how to get in here. And we are going to go to webinars, and we will find my list, and it would be methods of parsing and outputting data. So there you go. And this, this webinar today is also going to be posted to the same location. So you guys have now found the secret to get into all these great recordings. All right. Well, I do believe that that is all we have time for today. It looks like there are some questions that are coming in. Please feel free uh, to email us uh, or call us if you have any additional questions as they come through. And we will, some of these questions that came in that we ran out of time on, we will still be able to address those for you. And we'll contact you directly. And if you do have any questions or comments that come up, either ones that we didn't address today or uh, that come up as you start using uh, these features in CORE, please email support at vitechcorp.com. It's in the chat window there. Or you can post your questions and comments in the forum of our community site at community at vitechcorp.com. And I will chat out that link right now. And I'd like to thank all of you for joining us today. Please keep an eye out for our next webinar invitation that should be coming to your email. On September 25th, we're going to be talking about putting the systems back in systems engineering with Zane Scott. And at the conclusion of this webinar today, a survey is going to open up on your screen. Please take a moment to give us feedback on today's presentation or let us know what topics you'd like to see covered in the future webinars. And thank you so much, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.